Okay, welcome back. This is Unit 1 Higher, second half, covering the universe content. We're going to try and do it all in 10 minutes, cover all the important stuff, every key area. Let's go. Okay, first off, gravitation. So we need to describe an experiment to measure the acceleration of a falling object. A uh, couple of options for you. You could drop an object off a known height uh, and time how long it takes to hit the floor. If you know the displacement, if you know the starting velocity, which will obviously be zero, if you drop it, uh, you can rearrange it to find the acceleration. Uh, similarly, you could drop a bit of card through a light gate. Similar idea, you know the starting velocity is zero, you know how far it falls, you measure the final velocity with the light gate and use one of your equations of motion, rearrange it for A. Okay, we're now going to look at projectiles. That's where something is moving in a curved path, so two dimensions, and we think of the two components, the horizontal and vertical, separately. The words we use are constant horizontal velocity. In other words, the horizontal velocity stays the same and constant vertical acceleration because gravity acts in the vertical direction. Okay, solving questions on projectiles using equations of motion, big part of unit one. First thing you do, if you have a velocity and angle, you're going to resolve it into the initial horizontal and vertical components. The component uh, adjacent to the angle will use cos, the component opposite the angle will use sine. And it's those two initial components that you put into your SUVAT table. So you draw your SUVAT table, two columns, horizontal, vertical, think of them independently, uh, and you can put in your initial velocities that you've just resolved. You can also put in your uh, acceleration due to gravity in the vertical column as negative 9.8. Uh, and in this scenario, because the ball is going to land at the same, uh, same height, we know the vertical displacement is zero. So have a think about what you know from the question. Uh, the reason I've blanked out this bit of the table is there's no acceleration in the horizontal direction. Remember, there's a constant horizontal velocity. Uh, and that means my final velocity will just be the same as my initial velocity. Uh, when you're doing SUVAT for projectiles, for the vertical column, you can use any of your four equations of motion. For the horizontal column, the only equation you need is S equals UT, because you've only got three terms, S, U, and T. So vertical, use any of the four. Horizontal, just use that one. Uh, from then on in, it's just a case of choosing the equation and solving it. So for example, I could work out V using this equation. Uh, I could work out T using that equation. Uh, once you know the T, you, the time, you can carry it across. The time in both columns will always be the same. Um, and then I could work out this final bit of the table using S equals UT. Okay, and six things you need to know for solving projectile questions. We've talked about this. If something is dropped, the starting velocity is zero. Similarly, if something gets to the apex, the highest point, the final velocity at that point will be zero. Uh, you also need to remember that if you square root a number, you can have two answers, a positive and a negative. Particularly important, for example, if something is traveling downwards, it might be a negative velocity. So just be careful when you're square rooting. Uh, make sure you choose your positive and negative directions and keep it consistent throughout a question. We've talked about acceleration, no acceleration in the horizontal direction, negative 9.8 in the vertical direction. And finally, if something is thrown up and comes back to the same height, not only will the vertical displacement be zero, but the final velocity will be equal and opposite to the starting velocity in the vertical direction. Okay, so knowledge that satellites are in free fall around a planet or star. Anything in orbit is falling towards the planet or star, but the reason it doesn't crash is it has such a high horizontal velocity that the curved path that's created matches the curve of the planet or the star. It's literally falling around the planet. Um, that means things like the ISS, the International Space Station, because it's constantly falling, that's why people appear weightless. Um, it's not that there's no gravity, it's because they're constantly falling, and when you're constantly falling, you appear weightless. Okay, Newton's law of universal gravitation. Uh, what a guy Isaac Newton was. Came up with this equation which works out the force between two objects of mass. Doesn't matter if it's planets or people, any object with mass will have a force of attraction between another object with mass. Uh, it's very important when you're using this equation, you have the mass of the two objects. G is a constant uh, from your data sheet and R is the separation distance between the centers of masses, not from the surfaces of the planets. Go to the centers. Uh, you put your numbers in, make sure you square R, that's a common mistake, and it allows you to work out the force of attraction between the two objects. Uh, and if you have an object close to the surface of a planet, once you've worked out that force, that's another way of working out the weight. The weight of an object is the force of gravity pulling it towards the centre of the planet.
Okay, basics of special relativity. So first thing you need to realize is the speed of light is constant for everyone. Doesn't matter who you are, where you are, what you're doing, you'll observe the speed of light as three times 10 to the power of eight meters per second. That was Einstein's first postulate. But because the speed of light stays constant, it means that things like time and distance are actually relative and they will change depending on your frame of reference. Um, a frame of reference is just two people observing the same event from different positions. Uh, so for example, these two guys Someone on the train throws a ball, sees the ball moving at 10 meters per second, but someone outside of the train looking at the moving train and the moving ball would see it move at 60 meters per second. So things depend on your frame of reference, time and length are relative. Okay, so solving special relativity problems. You have two equations, one for time, one for length. You have to be clear, T dash and T, L dash and L, which way round. There's a simple way for remembering. So normally you'll have a stationary observer looking at a moving distant object. Uh, so what the way to remember it, the dashes, I like to think of it as the telescope. So the person that's stationary looking at the distant event, that's going to be your dashes. Uh, we call it the dilated time. Dilated just means, you know, getting bigger. So that's going to be your biggest of the two times. Contracted length, contraction is getting smaller. So your contracted length is going to be the smallest of the two lengths. But the dashes are the stationary observer uh, looking at the distant object. The person that's moving, that's called the proper time and the proper length. Uh, and often you're given the velocity in terms of C. So 0.9 C just means 90% the speed of light. And when you substitute that into your equation, what you'll notice is you can cancel the C's out and it makes your maths a lot easier. Uh, make sure you can rearrange both equations to work out T or L if you need to. Uh, but apart from that, just be careful with the maths. You'll be able to solve questions on special relativity. Yes. It's the apparent change in the frequency of a wave caused by relative motion between the source of the wave and the observer. Okay, Doppler effect. So this is where a moving object is emitting a wave. It could be sound, could be light. If it's moving towards you, the waves get bunched together, shorter wavelengths, so it's higher pitched or blue shifted if it's light. If it's moving away from you, the waves get stretched out, so a longer wavelength resulting in a lower pitch or red shift. Uh, bottom of the equation, you have a plus or a minus. So remember, if it's moving away from you, you're gonna add. If it's moving towards you, you're going to take away. Um, here's an example. Um, and just to explain the terms, so FO is the observer's frequency, what you're going to hear. FS is the frequency coming from the source. V is the velocity of the wave, so that's the speed of sound or the speed of light. And VS, the velocity of the source, that's the speed of the moving object. Uh, here's an example, you can press pause and have a look if you want to. Okay, so if a galaxy is moving away, we're going to get redshift. That's where the lines in the absorption spectrum are all moved towards the red end of the spectrum. Galaxies moving towards us, the light is going to be blue shifted. Most galaxies show redshift, which is evidence that the universe is expanding. They're moving away. There's two equations to work out redshift. Uh, you can take the ratio of the recessional velocity divided by the speed of light. Recessional velocity being the velocity of the moving galaxy. Because it's a ratio, there's no units. Uh, this also means the faster the galaxy is moving, the more redshift you're going to get. You can also work it out looking at wavelengths uh, of one of these lines, both in the distant galaxy and the known wavelength when you measure it here on Earth. Okay, so what we find is that the further a galaxy is away from us, the faster it will be traveling. Uh, the gradient of this graph is Hubble's constant, which is on your data sheet, and this is called Hubble's law. It links the recessional velocity with the distance away from the Earth. Um, you can use this equation with some clever maths to estimate the age of the universe as 13.8 billion years. So just like on a roundabout, the faster you spin, the more force you need to hold yourself in and stop yourself flying off. It's the same with our galaxies. The faster the stars are orbiting, uh, the more gravity we need to hold everything together. But when we take observations, there's not enough mass in our galaxies to account for the gravity we need to hold it all together. So there's some missing mass where we, we don't know where it is, but we know it's there. We call it dark matter. Uh, similarly, the universe is expanding faster and the acceleration is increasing. We're not sure what's causing that acceleration. We call it dark energy. At the moment, it's unknown. Okay, star temperatures, very common graph showing different temperatures of stars and how the intensity of radiation varies over different wavelengths. Uh, two important things to note, for a hotter star, you're going to have more radiation being emitted per second, uh, but also the peak wavelength, which is the top of the curve, the peak wavelength for a hotter star is going to be shorter. Uh, pause the video, have a go at this multiple choice question.
Finally, four bits of evidence for the Big Bang. Cosmic microwave background radiation, thought to be the afterglow of radiation left over from the Big Bang. Uh, secondly, Obler's paradox, you'll have to Google it. Uh, the abundance of helium and hydrogen, and that most galaxies are redshifted, telling us that the universe is expanding. Boom. Okay, well done, you made it to the end. That is the second half of Unit 1 Higher Physics. Um, just a couple of things to do, so just make sure you know on your equation sheet which equations you're going to use and for which scenario. Uh, make sure you're confident with your symbols, make sure you know what all these different letters are, make sure you're good with your units, uh, and then you just need to go and practice, 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 get some exam questions under your belt. Uh, there is no substitution for hard work at this point. Um, do you go back through the video, uh, there were the learning intentions, the key areas at the top of the video, each slide. Uh, just pause it, make sure you're confident with each of those, but then practice, 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 and uh, let's smash it. Keep going, well done, and I'll catch you soon.